Hey everyone, Doug here, Doug Johnson Productions, Orem, Utah. I wanted to do a quick, uh, kind of a training video, uh, talking about how to do a picture in picture. I've had, when I've done it in some of my past videos, I've had a lot of people ask me, how are you doing that? So I wanted to show you, show you guys what it takes to actually pull that off. Um, th there is one hardware requirement uh, in order to make this happen. Uh, your switcher has to have something that's called a digital video effects unit, or DVE. Uh, it's the DVE that allows you to shrink that image down so that you can actually place it somewhere else on the screen. Without the DVE, you have to do a manipulation of position in camera. And so if you wanted something to appear in the upper right-hand corner, you'd actually have to zoom out on your camera and pan to the left and tilt down a little bit in order to move, in order to move the, the person's image up and just up into that corner and then at that point you could create the the picture in picture effect from that but having a dve allows you to ha in switcher shrink the video down in order to fill just the portion of sc the screen that you want to use for the picture in picture so now for this demonstration i'm using my blackmagic design atem 2me production studio 4k say that three times fast uh, but the same technique applies to other switchers as well so don't take this video to be specific just to blackmagic switchers it'll work with others as well and now my black all the blackmagic switchers currently only have one dve so that means you can only have this picture in picture active uh, on one video source and only have one on screen at a time that also means unfortunately that you can't have one on the active program and be preparing a different one for the next shot because your DVE is actually in use at that time. It also means that you can't use DVE based transition effects so if you do a transition where the video shrinks from one corner down to another that uses the DVE and so you won't be able to do that effect while you have a picture-in-picture -picture active and you won't be able to set up a picture-in-picture -picture while you have that effect or that, that transition effect active. So. So let's actually just go ahead and jump in, show you guys ex what what picture-in-picture uh, picture I'm talking about. So if I go picture-in-picture uh, picture on air, there you go. You'll see the camera over here on the side uh, in the picture-in-picture picture window. And I'll be using that here uh, as I describe what's going on. So with that, let's actually jump right in. So I have up on screen here the uh, user interface for the software user interface for the Blackmagic switcher. Uh, there's a couple of important important things here that we'll have to we'll have to take note of. Um, so uh, first thing first things first. Like this is the switcher I'm using is a 2ME switcher. So um, it's, it's almost it's almost like having two separate switchers in one unit. So you can actually produce two program feeds. Um, I won't be taking advantage of that here today. But uh, it's something to be aware of as I'm navigating the user interface. I'll have to select ME1 for each of the different things that I'm doing. Okay, now, um, the probably the easiest way to do a picture-in-picture -picture is to use an upstream key in combination with a DVE. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. So in my user, user interface, I've got up, upstream key 1 for MixFX Engine 1 selected. And then I come over here and I select the DVE tab because this is actually where you where you will set up uh, the DVE so that it, it shrinks. There we go. So, so it shrinks the image down to fill the screen. All right. So the first option we're going to have we're going to select here is is uh, camera the camera source. So in this case, camera eight. Camera eight's the camera that you're seeing me from the side here. So I've got that selected as my fill source. And then that just below that, I have selected the position and size for that window. So these units vary. Uh, different switchers, different software, or whatever. Uh, Blackmagic uses a numbering system that's based on a 16 by 9. Uh, and so when you see a number that's 10.5 for the left, for the X position, um, that's like 10.5 out of 16 from the left to the right. So it gives you an idea of what these numbers actually represent. So, so this window that you're looking at here, me in the window, um, it's position x y position is 10.5 for x and 3.0 for y and then just below that was actually where we set the size um, 0.4 by 0.4 that's actually 1.0 would be full full width full height of the screen so basically this is saying it's 40 percent width and 40 percent height but i know you're saying wait a minute that window is uh, with you in it is not 40 percent the width of the screen and the reason that uh it, that is the case is because come down a little bit further here and i'm actually masking off 
portions of the image. So under these mask options, I am trimming the right side of the image. So just let, let me demonstrate what that looks like if I turn the masking off. So there you go. So uh, I was trimming off the right side of that image because it's uh, covering up some of the work, some of the area of the computer screen that I want to show. Um, and I don't need that, so I'm doing a trim here. Uh, trim value of 18 here actually centers me up inside that frame. And it's only taking the, there we go, the left portion, there we go, left portion of, of, of that camera source. So if you need to, um, say for example, your, your subject is actually centered in the shot, then your left and right masking options would probably be the same, if, if not very similar. So in this case, because I am so far off to the left, I'm masking more on the right and, this, and actually masking nothing on the left. Now I come down a little bit further here and you have options to set the color of the border. I'm not going to bother with that right here. And you can also have some other options to basically sit, uh, change, like add a bevel to, to that border. Uh, I don't particularly like that, but, but the option is there. So um, that's kind of the gist of it. There are some other options here for doing some, some motion. Uh, you can move things on and off the screen if you want to. Uh, but so it, by changing the size and changing the position, and then adding a border on it, that's how I've, how I've been able to do this this picture-in-picture -picture window that you're seeing. Now, as far as uh, bringing that on and off of screen, that's where we get into the next transition buttons that are here in the user interface. Now, th I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a little bit frank here. I, I think the way that they've implement, implemented this is a little bit confusing, and it took me a while to wrap my head around it. Uh, but... So essentially what we have here is we've got two buttons. We have one that says on air and one that says key one. So on air basically means that exactly that. So if I toggle that button, it actually turns that, that picture in picture or that key on and off again. Uh, the button below it, key one, this is where the confusion comes in. So say for example, I want to include the picture in picture in the next shot. So I'm going to select, you can't see it, but I'm selecting my wide camera behind me as the the background for the next shot and then I want to do the picture in picture uh, in the up, upper right hand corner for that so what I would do is I want to I come click on this button right here which is key one which basically says I want to include key one in the shot after my next transition so I'll just go ahead and make that transition I'll do a dissolve and you'll see that hello you'll see that uh, the main video source is there the ba as a background and the picture in picture appears uh, above it on top of it so you can transition back now the one thing that's confusing about this however and I can't I can't really show you this on screen very well actually technically I can okay so I'll transition back all right so key one uh, is lit and the key one button here is lit you can see that it's a nice bright yellow color you would think logically that having that button lit means that that key would appear as part of the transition for the next shot and unfortunately what that button actually means is we're changing the status of that key for the next shot so if if the key is currently on screen as it is you can see you can see my picture there and you can also see that the on air button is lit and the key one button is actually lit. What that really means is that it's going. The status is going to be switched, and it's go from going to go from on screen to off screen. So uh, I'll go ahead and make that transition. And you'll see that my picture will actually disappear there. So even though the key one button was actually lit, which would imply it's going to be on the next shot, what it actually means is it's going to be taken off of screen and not be on screen. So transition back and you'll see that the two buttons are lit. Now if I click that button and turn it off, basically what that means is we're not going to change the status. It's going to therefore it's going to remain on screen. And so when now now when I do the transition, I'll, let me actually change camera shots here. Uh, when I do the transition, you'll see that the picture in picture window stays on screen. Uh, even though that button was not lit. So a little bit confusing there. Uh, something you just kind of have to get used to. That's kind of the way it's done. So um, just keep that in mind. Once you consider the button to mean switching the status rather than whether it's going to be on screen or not, then it makes a little bit more sense. It's still still confusing to me, but but if if you keep that in mind, you'll actually be able to make this happen. So so um, 
Now, black magic switchers are unique in one other way, and they have at least the top, the top end ones, the 2ME and the 4ME versions, they have another way that you can use to do picture in picture, and that's what we call the super source. And so, let me actually take my picture. Well, let's see, actually we'll go, let's go ahead and configure this. So, so I hide the upstream keys, one and two here, and then I can go uh, into super source up above it. So, um, this has some default layouts, but these can be customized. So we'll actually start with, with this one, the two by two grid layout. And then what we're gonna wanna do here is we're gonna wanna set up uh, some sources, set up the video sources, and, uh, and then set up the, which which boxes actually appear on screen. So the boxes are numbered one, two, three, and four for this particular preset. So if we're gonna say we don't want box one to appear, then we can un uncheck check box for box one. Box two we do want, box three we do not want, and box four we do not want. So effect effectively what we're doing is we're just gonna be doing box two in the upper right hand corner. Now we also need to set up a few other things here. So we need to say box two, and we're gonna choose our source source. So camera eight is the one that, that I'm currently appearing in. All right. Now, the other thing you have to do here, super sources are effectively their own source. It's not a, something that's meant to be overlaid on top of on top of your regular preview or program and video. So what we have to do here is we have to come in and we'll come into the art page and basically select what we want for the background. So uh, this is not meant to be this, this is not meant to be something that you necessarily can figure on the fly. It's going to re requires a little more effort on your part in order to make this work. So just to so you can see that this is different, I'm gonna select camera five as the art source, which basically means the background. And I'm going to, just so it's easier to see what's going on, turn off my my uh, my inset, my, my existing picture in picture that's using the upstream key. And, and then I will select super source as my source for the video. You'll see that green button lit up here. And then as I click the auto button to do the transition, you'll see that there, we have the rear camera from the back as the main art source, the background, and then camera eight, which is me in the window there uh, as the inset. So uh, transition back and uh, we'll just kind of take a look at some of the other options here. So um, super source uh, does not have what we call it does not have the masking features such as it's called it does have cropping though which is effectively the same thing so if I set my cropping option here so I'll set this to 12 and then do the transition you'll see that the window is now smaller uh, so it, it does cropping very similar uh, to what you what we saw on the other um, so that's kind of the gist of it um, there is uh, there is an option for a border under the art control. So if I turn turn that on, again do the transition, so you can see there that you can do borders on there. It's done a little bit differently, but it does have some of the same options. Uh, however, you don't have things like rotation and some other other options to get with the the keyer. The nice thing about using super source is it does not take up your DVE, so you're still able to use your DVE. Say for example, if I choose the DVE as a transition type and do this, the, the switching, you can see that it's using the DVE to slide the video source off screen. Um, and it does not require use of uh, the DVE to do that. Or it does not require, or this is, because the super source is being used for picture in picture, it's not tying up the DVE. So you can actually use both in conjunction with one another. Uh, do keep in mind though, the super source feature is specific to Blackmagic and it's only on their two highest end switchers, the, the 2ME version and the 4ME version. It's not available on the television studio models or the, the 1ME or production studio uh, 4K uh, switcher models. So, uh, so um, anyway, so that, that kind of gives you the gist of it. Uh, it's basically done, the, the trick to, being a, to doing a picture in picture is actually having that DVE feature on your switcher. And once, once you know your switcher has a DVE, you can actually use that to scale the image down, to move it to where you want on screen, and then use that as part of an upstream key uh, in order to bring that on and off screen. You can either bring it on and off with a transition or just hit the on air button and bring it on uh, live. So anyway, um, that said, get rid of get rid of that. So 
So that's that's, that's kind of how it works. Uh, other switchers are going to be very similar to the way that it's done on the upstream key here. Other switchers don't have the, the super source feature, but depending on the switcher manufacturer, you might find other features that, that basically allow you to do picture in picture. Uh, so cons consult the instructions for your particular switcher to see if there's another way to do it. But uh, in terms of the industry standard way, it's done with the upstream key and a DVE. So anyway, if you have if you have any questions, uh, be sure and ask those down below in the comment section. I'll try to answer those the best I can. I also welcome suggestions and, and uh, other comments. Uh, be sure also to subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'm going to be doing more of these tutorial types of videos moving forward. I think that there's a lot of interest in that, at least that there appears to be. So, you know, a little bit of just it's kind of instructional training type stuff. Uh, I'll probably focus on one little aspect of video production here and there and do a whole video about it. So, uh, If you have other ideas for, for training videos that you'd like to see, be sure and let me know in the comments. So, I do appreciate you guys watching the video, and as always, uh, help you have a great day.